Welcome to Deep Thought. Culture shapes your perception of reality. Man, let me get a deep for a minute. Reality is just simply what is. What is. What is, what's, what's existing, what's happening in that moment. That's reality. Ultimately, that's the truth. But the thing is, we might not see it as truth because regardless of what's happening, we see it through the lens of our culture. We see it through the lens. Because, you know, a lot of people will say um, some is objective. And, but no, they, that a thing is a tree is, a, is objective, that a particular vehicle, like a car is, okay, you look at a car. That's a great example. Uh, the other day I was looking out my office window and, you know, I had a neighbor's car parked in front of my, um, in front of my house. Because I, I never park in front, I always just keep my car in the driveway or the garage. So I was looking at the car and I was like, okay, objectively that's a car. Now, through the lens of culture, personal, uh, your personal uh, biases, your personal taste, whether that is a nice looking car is another thing. It's just all right car, but I wouldn't rush out to buy it, but somebody else might say something different, you know? But part of that is also the culture. See, or here's another, here's a greater example, even greater, even greater, the perception of beauty. A lot of it is perceived through culture. If you look at beauty cultures around, beauty, like different groups, they have different perceptions on what is attractive, what kind of enhancements there are. You know, like uh, a lot of people will say, well, Beauty is objective. Object? No, it's not. It depends on well, biological factors, but also cultural factors. Cultural factors. I'll use an example in the uh, black community. Black community with hair. Now, someone might think if their hair is processed or they got that weave or something, that's beautiful, and it will be beautiful to some people. But then... You have, that's just one part of the community. But in another part, a, a part that's more about natural living, your hair is only beautiful or would be seen as beautiful if it's natural, whatever you were born with. Your natural hair, I mean, there was a whole natural hair movement. It's still there, it's not as uh, talked about as much, but seeing just that the natural, like, you know, no enhancements, anything, just whatever you have, that's beautiful. You know, that's beautiful. But part of that's the culture. That's the, like the culture is really a term for cultivating behavior. What's going on? What, uh, and many factors will shape the culture, you know, shape the behavior, you know, whatever political system that's uh, in place, the media, whatever media images are presented. Even religion, even religion, how people will look at stuff. So let me use that example. Religion, you know, you know I don't promote any viewpoints on here, but this is just overall. Different religions will look at something as simple, well, yeah, well, simple as sex. You know, Abrahamic religions will tend to have a view of um, sex outside of marriage as, in general, something wrong. In general, in general, yeah, people break that all the time, but in general, you know, or try to control it or something. Other, other uh, paths in the world are the same way, but then you actually have some spiritual paths in the world that causes, see, that doesn't have a problem with it. In fact, it's a part, just regular sex is a part of the culture. But and that's, you know, but that's, you know, when people are shaped by that. So they're going to look at a sexual situation or an individual just a certain way, two different ways. Like if a woman is presenting herself in a very sensual manner, someone whose uh, viewpoint was shaped by the, uh, certain, certain religious cultures might say, ooh. Meanwhile, the other one, you know, another one might be like, yeah. But everything is, the political thoughts, everything, the ideologies, isms, everything. There's so much because the thing is, we're, not, we're never in a totally natural state. It's always a culture. 
even a class culture. I talk about social class on my main channel. Now, that shapes your perception, that's a culture. Any sociologist will verify that. They will say, you know, social classes are cultures. You know, someone who's born, say they born in a, a housing project, a trailer park, a res, a very poor area, very, very impoverished area. There's going to be a certain culture in how people deal with each other, how they interact with each other. Is primarily in the poorest areas a culture of survival, doing what you have to do to survive. Very pragmatic. And it affects how they're looking at money, how they're looking at food, fun, how they're interacting with people, even how they mate. But that's how they see in the reality that they're dealing with. But then someone whose uh, perception of culture is shaped by upper class environment where they have money, they have, they have food, they have medical care, they have a better education, better life opportunities, can travel more, maybe have a bigger viewpoint of the world. It's going to be different from that person whose viewpoint of the world is day-to-day -day -day survival. That person in the upper class, their view, vision of reality is they think in long term. They're already thinking, you know, they can be teenagers and they're already thinking, okay, do I work, do I be this lawyer or do I be this doctor? Do I be this hedge fund manager? You know? But that's their perception. It's like, oh, the person in the poor environment, their perception is, hey, the world's a dangerous place. Dog eat dog, you know? Dog eat dog, you know, physical survival, whatever you got to do. Now, it's interesting in the upper class environment, they look at it as dog eat dog too, but it more is like, you know, this company taking over this company, you know, rising to the C-suite over someone else. <laughs> but they looking at it different, mating and everything. But that's shaped by culture, that's still culture. The upper class and the lower class will have two different cultures. And everything, everything, think about it. Think about your own perceptions. How much of it was shaped by growing up in the church? How much of it was shaped by growing up in certain neighborhoods? How much of it was shaped by going to certain high schools? Because the thing is, we all have multiple cultures. Let me use that high school example. Now, I've said before, for those in the D.C. area, I went to Archbishop Carroll High School. It was a... a college prep type of school. Now, at the time, I don't know what it is now, but um, like 90, 95% of the young men who attended there, it was an all boys school when I was there, were going to college. It was college prep. But it was also had a, a winning attitude. We used to call it that Carol Pride. It was about winning, winning, winning. I remember we lost a football game one time and the whole school was sad. The, um, you know, the principal, I forget, I think, what was it, a priest? I think it was another term, it's so long ago, but uh, got on the loudspeaker and was just like, look, this is just one loss. He had to console us. But one of the things I noticed from that culture, many people graduated, they would do well in life, but there was a certain culture there. And then we perceived as life as, hey, you can win. You know, how you interact with, it, with culture and everything. But it'll shape your perception of what's possible, what's happening in the world, you know? Like I'll use a financial example again, this whole talk about recession. Now somebody very poor in a poor environment from a culture that sees like the negatives will be like, oh man, nah, I might lose this job. Oh, what am I gonna do? Meanwhile, somebody from an upper class, their perception of reality is, oh, opportunity to get some houses, get some more property, make more money. <laughs> you know, it's just different, but it still come down to culture because culture means cultivating your behavior. We're not in a while. If you look at every society in the world, every society has a culture how they um, cultivate the people within that culture. Many major cultures and then many tiny subcultures. Even within a family, even within a family, every single family, every single household is a, is a tiny micro subculture, you know? You know, you get one family, the culture in the household is just party all the time and quite frankly, kind of toxic. 
Meanwhile, the other one, they got books and learning materials all over the place. And, you know, the culture is try to learn as much as possible. But whatever the case, culture still is shaping your perception on how you're going to see things, how you're going to react to things. And that's the important thing. I want y'all to think about that, all right? So that's all I have for now. Think on this. Peace and blessings. <laughs>